If you've had a chance to try out the Features Demo game in the latest version of NERPG, you may have noticed that the weather now changes throughout the day. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to add and configure weather effects in your game. So, let's get started. For this demo, I will be using NERPG Engine 0.15, which is available as a free download from nerpg.org downloads in Unity package format. At the time of this video's creation, NERPG Core 0.15 is still under review on the Unity Asset Store, but if you're watching this in the future and you notice that the latest version is 0.15 or higher, you can use the NERPG Core version from the Unity Asset Store to follow along. I will be using one free asset from the Asset Store in this demo, and that is the Rocky Hills Environment Light Pack for free by Toby Fredson. It's got a great demo scene included that has some trees and a mountain environment in it that will be perfect for the snow, fog, and rain weather effects that I will be demoing. After installing the Rocky Hills Environment Asset into your project, you may notice a few warnings in your console. Don't worry, you can ignore those safely as they won't have any effect on this tutorial. There are two ways to install the weather effects into your game. The first is to create a new game by going to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, and New Game Wizard. The second will be through using the Template Content Wizard. Let's demonstrate the New Game Wizard first. I'm going to create a new game and I'm just going to call that game Weather. I'm going to copy the existing scene for the first scene. I will name it Mountain, and I will find the scene under the Toby Fredson directory under Scenes, and I'm looking for the ATSG underscore sample, and I'll just drag it into the existing scene reference. Next, I'm going to uncheck all of the demo content because the only content that we need is weather, so just make sure you leave that installed, and the weather will get installed in your game. I'm also just going to add some day and night ambient sounds because we do need those for the actual demoing. The first one I'm going to add is the spring birds loop for the day ambient sounds and for the night ambient sounds I'm going to add the cricket ambient loop. I'll press create and I will wait for the wizard to finish creating the game. If you've already got a game and you just want to install the weather effects, you can go to the Tools menu under any RPG under Wizard and choose Template Content Wizard. You'll add one piece of scriptable content and just search for weather. And we have the individual weather profiles as well as all weather profiles. I'm just going to choose all weather profiles, which will install everything, and hit Install. Once everything is installed, there are a few things that I need to do to this demo scene to make it work properly with NERPG. The first thing we're going to do is search for the work directory here and just get rid of the existing cameras. We don't need them. NERPG has its own camera. We don't really need the reflection probes either, so I'm just going to remove those as they're not going to add anything to the demo. Next, we can click on the directional light and we need to change the calling mask. The light included in this demo does not affect the player and we need it to, otherwise our player will appear completely black. Finally, I need to fix the terrain. Right now there's a missing script on it, so I'll just remove that component. And the trees in this are not set up to be used with terrain as they have multiple mesh colliders, so we just need to disable the Enable Tree Colliders checkbox, otherwise we will get warning messages when we start the game. I'm also going to adjust some of the lighting settings, so I will go to Window, Rendering, and Lighting, and then I'll just dock that up here. The first thing that I need to do is go to the Environment, and I'm just going to change the Fog Mode to Exponential, as it will work best for this demo. There's a missing texture in the halo texture, so I'll just set that to none. And finally, the environment lighting right now is set to skybox, but Unity has an issue where if you haven't baked your lighting yet, then the shadows will be too dark. So I'm just going to set that to color instead, and then it will work fine and look okay without the baked lighting. I'm also going to set the default spawn location for the player. So what I want to do is middle click on the ground right here in this little valley. 
select default spawn location and click Control alt f on my keyboard and now the player will spawn in the bottom of this little valley here. With that done, I will save the changes to the scene and let's take a look at what happens when there is no weather configured, which is the default. So I'll press play. When the game starts, you can see that we've got clear skies and just a little bit of the default fog in the level. You can also hear the cricket sounds in the background because right now it's 10.05 p.m. Don't worry about the skybox, I will be demonstrating day and night cycle in the next tutorial. Now let's add some weather. Weather is configured on a per scene basis, so to configure the weather we'll want to open up games and open up our weather game. We'll find the resources folder and open that up and then look for the scene node folder and find the mountain scene node. You can see that we've got our day ambient sounds as well as our night ambient sounds. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can find the weather settings. For this demo, what I'm going to do is set the minimum weather length to 5 seconds and the maximum weather length to 7 seconds. This means that whenever weather is chosen, it will last for between 5 to 7 seconds, at which point new weather will be chosen. The default no weather weight right now is set to 100, which means that because there are no other weather weights for it to compete with, the weather will always be clear. Let's add some weather. In this case, let's go ahead and add some snow. So I'm going to click here, select snow, and I'm going to give the snow a weather weight of 100. These are weighted values, which means that they're not percentages. They'll just be chosen based on the weight of any particular value divided by all of the weights. So I can just set no weather weight to zero and have the snow at 100 and it will always be snowing. Let's see what that looks like. Once we're in the game, we can see that there is some snow falling and you can see that the color of the fog has changed to a more whitish color. You can also hear that there are no longer any background sounds. There is one issue that you may notice with this snow though, and that is that if my character is moving fast enough, you may notice that the snow is all behind the character and not in front of the character really or around the character. We can change this because there is a special setting called teleport particles on the snow. So if I search my project hierarchy for snow effect and click on that, then change the search value to nothing, we'll find the included fog, rain, and snow prefabs. If I click on teleport particles here, what will happen is as soon as my character starts to move out of range of the particles, then the snow particles will actually be teleported to the other side of the particle system. So if we look at where the handle is here and my character is standing in the middle, then if my character runs, say for example, to the right, then any time that this particle in the back gets more than 25 meters away from him, it'll actually be teleported to the other side. This gives a much more realistic feeling for the snow than choosing local simulation space, because if you choose local simulation space, all of the snow will move with the character, which makes it sort of unrealistic, because snow should fall straight down, it shouldn't be moving. We can do the same thing for the fog effect as well. We can click on teleport particles. The weather effects in NERPG just basically use different variations on the default particle system. For the rain effect, we don't need to use teleport particles because with the rain effect, basically rain should always be falling straight down and it's actually falling fast enough that if the character moves through it, you won't notice this issue. Let's go ahead and load up the scene again and see what difference that makes. Now when my character runs, you can see the particles of snow are basically appearing in the distance, and that's because when they got too far behind the character, they were teleported in front of him. This gives a much more realistic effect as basically no matter where my character is, the snow is going to be surrounding him 
to a radius of about 25 meters on all sides, which basically gives sort of this illusion that the snow is everywhere in the level, even though it's really only happening in a small circle around the character. Let's take a look at some more weather. First, I'm going to go back to the scene node and click on the mountain scene node and let's change the weather to rain. You'll notice now that when the rain starts playing, once again we are not hearing any of the levels ambient sounds. There's no crickets playing, but we do hear this rain loop. And because the rain's falling fast enough, there really isn't any need to teleport it as it hits the ground too quickly for the effect to be noticeable. You can also see that we've got some gray fog in here. Let's take a look at how the rain effect is actually configured and understand how we can modify this if we want to. I'm going to click on the rain weather here, and you can see that rain actually uses fog. If we wanted, we could set the fog density to be a little bit higher here. Let's say 0.05, and then we're not going to be able to see as far around into the level. For the ambient sounds audio, we've got this rain loop, and what happens is this ambient sound, this rain loop, will actually replace the ambient sounds in the level while the rain is active. You can also see that the shadow strength here is set to zero, and what that means is that the main directional light or sunlight in the level will not cast shadows while this effect is active because, of course, rain should be blocking out the sun. Let's take a look at how the snow weather is configured. In the snow weather, we see that there is no ambient sounds, but we do have this suppress ambient sounds checkbox ticked. What that means is that the ambient sounds for the level will basically just be turned off, and that's why it's so silent when the snow is falling. Right now, I think there's an issue where I forgot to set the default shadow strength to zero on the snow, so if you don't want any shadows while your snow is falling, just go ahead and pull that down. Also, we can change the fog intensity of the snow to be much higher if we want. Let's change it to 0.1. We can save those changes, and let's go have another look at the rain first. You can see that with the rain, the fog is now a little bit thicker. Now let's look at the snow. To do that, I will go back to the mountain scene node again and just change the rain weather to snow and press play. Now you can see with the snow that the level is much more white. You can hardly see anything off in the distance because of the fact that we have changed that fog setting. Next, let's look at the fog weather. To do that, we'll go back to the mountain scene node again and just change the weather to fog. And let's take a look at the actual weather profile for fog. Now you'll notice that fog has its own ambient sound, which means that it's going to once again override the crickets in the level whenever it's active. Its shadow strength is set to zero, meaning the sun won't cast any shadows while the fog is active. We are using the default environmental fog settings, but in addition to that, if we look for the fog effect prefab, then we've also got this cool foggy effect that's also going to follow the character around, and because teleport particles is set to true, it will basically always appear as if the character is surrounded by this fog, no matter how fast he's moving in the level. Let's press play and see what that looks like. Now you can hear this sort of spooky fog sound happening, and as my character moves, then you can see these particles just appearing in the distance around him, no matter which direction he's traveling in. Finally, let's take a look at weighted weather and see how we can actually have the weather be a little bit more random. I'm going to go back to the scene node, go to the mountain scene node, and what I'm going to do is I will have three weather weights here. 
So we can choose from fog. We'll set the second one to rain. We'll set the third one to snow. And what we'll do with the clear weather is we will set the no weather weight to 100. So now these are basically all evenly weighted, meaning that there is about a 25% chance that we're going to get clear weather, about a 25% chance that we'll get fog weather, 25% chance of rain, and 25% chance of snow. Let's save that and press play and see how that works. Once the level is loaded, you can see that the snow was randomly chosen. If we wait a few seconds, then in between five to seven seconds from now, the weather will change. Because this is completely random, then, you know, snow could be chosen twice. Now we're seeing some rain falling. The sound has changed to the rain. Now we've got clear weather, so you can once again hear the cricket ambient sounds playing in the weather, or in the background. And if we wait a little while longer, now we have some randomly chosen fog, and we can hear the spooky fog sounds in the background. That's about it for weather effects. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up the video and subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.